now I'd like to invite Dr. Harshad Thakur, who is Director of National Institute of Health and Family Welfare, Government of India. So he is presently the Director of NIH, who is a premier technical institute under Ministry of Health and Family Welfare, Government of India. So he served as a professor in Tata Institute of Social Sciences for 19 years and a lecturer in KEM Hospital, Mumbai for nine years. He has served as a chairperson for Center for Health Policy Planning and Management for two years and chairperson for Center of Public Health for five years. So he has expertise in guiding research projects of PhD, MPhil, MPH, MHA and DHA scholars. So sir, so we have uh, NHLU is a top level body of India whose task is to train people and build their capacity. So in this Corona situation, what role is being played by NHLU in training manpower of different states and empowering them. Okay, uh, good afternoon everyone. And once again, I would like to thank organizers for inviting me. So as you know, NIHFW, National Institute of Health and Family Welfare. So we have a network of SIHFWs, State Institute of Health and Family Welfare. And also we have Health Family Welfare Training Centers, HFWTC. So this is spread all across the country. And uh, so we are working closely with MOHFW, Ministry of Health and Family Welfare. So we help them in finalizing the training materials, uh, even their translation in Hindi languages. So along with MOHFW, we have a WhatsApp group and which includes all the ministry officials, HIFW personnel, uh, even NHM staff is there and then faculty and MD residents from NIHFW are all, uh, actively involved in this. So on day-to-day -day basis, it is seen that training is carried out properly at state level, district level, and local levels. And if there are any issues uh, anywhere in the state, they are resolved here. Uh, simultaneously, we are preparing, uh, initial, in initial part, we prepared a lot of IC materials in both Hindi and English languages. And we followed it, uh, followed by its dissemination all across the states. And the focus was mainly four, uh, four parts, to give scientifically correct information, to yeah. talk about various myths and misconceptions, then to manage incorrect information, fear, hatred, so how to manage that. And then we provided information about other useful and authentic resources on the internet related to the same topic. Uh, then, uh, as you know, uh, we have many training programs which are uh, already running. So we are planning to uh, make them online and COVID component will be uh, uh, inbuilt part of all these training programs. Then we have partnerships networking with various international organizations, for example, CDC Atlanta, Center for Disease Control Atlanta. So along with them, we are developing a training program for various health providers in the country, mainly doctors, nurses, paramedical staff, uh, administrators, and other staff associated with provision of health services. So uh, it will be slow, uh, shortly rolled out. And then there is an Asian Development Bank. So along with them, we are using this opportunity to upgrade our IT services and we'll be developing platform for conducting online courses. And initially, our thrust will be on the courses related to COVID, uh, but gradually we'll include other courses as well uh, because COVID has given us opportunity to improve our public health services and public health awareness is now quite high. So we want to maintain that tempo in the community. Uh, I think that's it. That is for your discussion. Yeah. So, uh, so one more thing, sir. This unprecedented situation has yes. also seen many guidelines and SOPs and that too revising on the day-to-day -day basis. So I asked a similar question to our AIMS director. So yeah. how you have ensured linkages with Niti Aayog, Ministry, NCDC and other agencies while regularly updating these guidelines in your trainings because your trainings are spread over at state level through SIHFW. And right. further, how do you ensure that these guidelines and SOP reach the right healthcare professionals of the state and so that they remain updated on them? Okay, so there are two components here. So one is linkages with various other institutes. So uh, as I told you, our students and our research staff, they are placed in MOHFW uh, at various divisions, training divisions, medical education division, uh, EMR division. So this ensures that we get correct information from them. We get revised guidelines and we regularly update content of our training. So this helps in, uh, us in our improving our 
uh, training components then our senior faculty members along with junior faculty members they are spread all uh, in few states of india uh, uh, in the form of central monitoring teams so they are in the community so they are placed in rajasthan uttar pradesh and andhra pradesh mainly and this uh, positioning of our faculty members in the community so they they give us direct feedback from the local level health providers and the community and the state level uh, providers so we get direct feedback from the community as well so that also helps us regarding the second part uh, uh, means as i mentioned earlier we have already formed a whatsapp group along with the ministry officials so we ensure that correct and revised guidelines and sop reaches health professionals of the state so that they remain, uh, remain updated so this uh, we it is like a cycle so we get the information we fit it in our training program again we uh, through the whatsapp group and our, our placement of our uh, staff and faculty in the community we get direct community feedback and that helps us in revising and updating our training programs yeah so uh, sir it's a really a challenging task for you and i can i can imagine that the guidelines are uh, almost changing almost on the daily basis yes. and you are updating the health professionals across the states on the daily basis and uh, getting the guidelines true guidelines and true things at the state level so it's really a challenging task and you are accomplishing it quite successfully so i congratulate you for uh, this endeavor and i i thank you for being a part of this discussion thank, thank you, you very much for inviting thank you